made it home, I dug her out, then I made her one of my aces Marijuana fragrance, this tree here is outrageous Want me to play in your city, send an email to my agent Anthony Benner will forever be known as the first recruit to commit to Georgia State in its FBS football history. Ross Jackson, a wide receiver, is also ready to visit as we move on now into week three of year one of the dynasty. So you can see Ross Jackson will be visiting not this week, but next week, week four, when we face up against another FCS opponent. I know, guys, that's going to be the last one of the season, I promise. But either way, today here you're going to see we're going to be adding a new tight end to the board after removing the one from last week I picked one with a low um, like a low lock percentage so that even though we're kind of a little bit later in the year we still might have a chance of getting him so here is a sped up version of what I did this week in recruiting uh, I was just kind of adjusting some points I got a lot of tips from a lot of people telling me uh, one main one was if I'm in the lead don't apply any points to him especially if you have a big lead and then just monitor those guys for the rest of the year but you might be able to get them to, you know, get ready to visit if you don't apply any points to them as long as you're in the lead for their choices. Here we have another upgrade. We're going to finally choose the uh, scouting one. I don't make a mistake this time, thank goodness, but either way. And then this week we're going to be facing up against West Virginia. Oh boy, this is going to be a very tough matchup. Our first FBS opponent of the season in West Virginia. A team that started out, I think, 6-0 and last season. Maybe 7-0 and before, you know, absolutely collapsing and finishing off like seven and six after that loss in the pinch drive bowl i think it was against syracuse but i'm not too sure and no, it wasn't against syracuse i don't know who it was against I either way not a big deal so you can see the tail of the tape right there um that they're only averaging 22 points a game so it looks like the post geno smith era uh, it was not as potent offensively as the uh, as the real is like you know the kind of like that seven no no virginia west virginia team from last year or whatever but they do have a solid quarterback here, Paul Millard, and this should be a bit more of an offensive showdown than last week's defensive showdown was. If you remember last week, we were coming off of a 15-14 to 14 victory after a game-winning field goal over FCS, I believe East it was. So, either way, should be a very entertaining game. Hopefully, we're just, you know, my goal is to just not get blown out going into this. I mean, who knows what, what's going to happen, but either way, we're going to receive to start the game. Albert Wilson, our star player, is back to receive. He will take it up the right sideline, and he's going to end up getting to about the 30-yard line before being brought down, and here comes the Georgia State offense. So, second and 14, quarterback Ronnie Bell will be getting the start today after a very impressive week last week. But the wide receiver is going to fumble that one, and that's going to be a turnover to start the game. Not a great turnover, but look at the replay here. And you can see, oh, he is clearly down. Wide receiver Jordan Giles should not have anything to feel bad about right there. He was clearly down, and after a booth review, the play will be reversed. So Georgia State will get the ball back, avoid a bit of a catastrophe there to start the season. Or not start the season, start the game. That would be pretty bad. Ronnie Bell, the quarterback keeper, he was going to end up kind of barreling his way up for about seven yards. That's going to set up a third and in inches. So on third and in inches, another read option. This one's a handoff to Travis Evans, and he will not get the first down. So fourth and two, fourth and short from about midfield. It's a good opportunity to go for it. I decided to do so. Time for another read option. This time it's going to be a quarterback keeper from Bell. He gets the easy first down. Fourth and short situations like that when the ball's past the 50-yard line but not really in field goal range. I usually go for it. It's usually what most colleges do. Either way, Albert Wilson's going to get absolutely decked right there after picking up 14 yards on that reception. So now first and 10. We're going to skip ahead to third and three here. Shotgun said Bell drops back. Looking to the right side, completes it to Albert Wilson, who once again gets decked, but picks up 12 yards. That's going to set up a first and goal. Now moving ahead to third and goal, Bell will drop back into the shotgun once again, and Bell is going to end up throwing this one away. So we're going to go for it once again. Oh, I always look at the ask coach plays to start off as we're not going to get that one. Mm. Um, I always look at the ask coach plays before I pick a play, you know, and then if I see one of the plays there, they're like, I'll pick one of those. And both of those times, it actually told me to go for it, but... Uh, I don't know if maybe I shouldn't, I mean, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, obviously, but I was really kind of debating that first one, but I decided if I really wanted to win this game, I was going to have to put up points, and I wanted to make a statement earlier that we were here to play, so, you know, obviously I regret not going for it, on, or I, re, I regret not kicking the field goal, but it's alright, Andrew Bew, I believe that's how you pronounce that name, I'm not too sure, Bowie, I think it's Bowie, picks up a big cane again right there, now Bowie on the handoff once again is going to go up the middle for about eight yards, so that's going to set up a third and two, now on a third and two, the next play, it's going to be a no huddle. West Virginia ran a lot of no huddle today. Quarterback Paul Miller drops back, finds Thompson over the right side. Jordan Thompson picks up seven yards. 
and it's going to be a new set of downs for the Mountaineers. Now, pistol set for the Mountaineers. Millard is going to get sacked this time. It's going to be a loss of seven on the play. So now we have a chance to possibly hold them right here. Second and 17, Millard looks over the middle, finds Jordan Thompson up the middle. That's going to be a touchdown. Jordan Thompson gets into the end zone, 36 yards. Good recovery by Paul Millard after getting sacked there. And the West Virginia Mountaineers are going to take a 7-0 lead as we are five minutes left in the half. Ronnie Bell on the quarterback keeper with the read option. Picks up nine yards right there. And we are approaching midfield right here with about four and a half to play in the quarter. Bell drops back. Finds Jordan Giles on this play. This was a bit of a fake screen wheel route, which really worked today. So I'm going to really add that one to one of my favorite plays in this playbook. Probably use it a lot more. Here I completed to Drew Pearson, and Pearson is going to pick up 11 yards right there. So we got a first and 10 now, moving into possibly field goal range. Here's going to be another read option. Quarterback keeper once again. Bell reading the option very effectively today. He fumbles. Luckily, Grant King, one of our offensive linemen, was there to pick it up and recover the ball. So we get a first down, and now Georgia State has a chance to possibly tie this game. Bell drops back. It's a little screenplay here, but that is read very well. And Travis Evans will lose seven yards on the play. So second and 17, Ronnie Bell drops back. He's looking over to the right side. Touchdown, Drew Pearson. And Georgia State has a chance to tie up this game at seven. Really playing strong so far for this first half. I mean, you know, obviously huge underdogs going into this game. West Virginia isn't that great, but they are like an 85 overall. We're only a 60. So it is a really big discrepancy, right? Not discrepancy. Uh, I don't know what the word is, but a really big difference, I should say. And Paul Millard here on third and nine is going to drop back, firing to the left side. That is going to be caught by Jordan Thompson, 26 yards down the field. West Virginia is once again just picking apart this Georgia State defense. We are going to struggle on defense all day today. Second and first and ten. That's going to be into the end zone. Intercepted by Stewart. What a clutch play by our defensive back. I believe he had the interception way back in week one. So he's really come up big. Here's that fake screen wheel route once again. It works. Jordan Giles picks up 13 yards. That's going to set up a first and 10. we got 30 seconds left to try and put some points on the board. Bell drops back. He's trying to cross midfield here. Fires it deep, and it's caught by Danny Williams. Williams picks up the 21-yard gain. Now 29 seconds left in the second quarter. Bell drops back. He's looking, looking. He's going to get sacked. It's a fumble. Picked up by Rowell. He's going to go all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. So just when it looks like we might be able to take a 14-7 lead, West Virginia takes a 14-7 lead of their own, and they received the ball to start the second half. So that's a 21-point swing right there. Very tough way to end the half as we're not going to be able to convert the Hail Mary. So we enter the half down by 7 points, 14-7. West Virginia looks to be in control of this game, and they should be able to really blow this one open. I mean, at some point, skill does have to take over, and West Virginia clearly out-talents this Georgia State squad. So I accidentally skipped the halftime report, so here is a basic rundown of the team stats from the first half, and we're going to immediately get ahead into the second half here. We will kick this one away. West Virginia is back to receive right at the goal line. Alfred will take it out of the end zone, and he's going to cut left and go back right and pick up 23 yards. So now West Virginia will take the field quarterback. Paul Miller drops back. He's looking to the right side, finds Jordan Thompson, who has had a huge game so far. He will pick up a nice chunk right there, including a first down. Now third and three later in the drive, Millard hands it off to Andrew Buey, and Buey picks up three yards and the first down on the play. So West Virginia continues their drive now. First and ten, Miller drops back. All shotgun sets for him so far today. That and the pistol. That's going to be a beautiful throw right there to Connor Arlia on a nice touch pass right there. So second and ten, Miller drops back. Once again, finds K.J. Myers, another guy who's going to have... We have a really decent second half, so Myers picks up 19 yards right there. That's going to be a first and 10. West Virginia now inside of the 10-yard line, third and goal, Millard. He's going to look over the middle, finds Garrison, and Dustin Garrison picks up the 8-yard touchdown right there. And West Virginia extends their lead to 21-7, and it looks like they might be ready to blow this game open. So next drive for the Georgia State Panthers, Ronnie Bell drops back. He's had a stellar first half so far, no reason to take him out, but it looks like, I believe that's Isaiah Bruce, is going to end up getting the interception right there. And West Virginia is just really about to take this game over. Now 21-7, third and four. Millard's going to hand off the Buey. Nice hit right there. So we're going to hold them to a field goal here, but they are going to end up, if they make this, extending it to a three-possession game. That would not be good. The kick is up, and it's good. So 24-7, three-possession game, only three minutes left in the third quarter. This one looks all but over at this point. So impressive showing so far by Georgia State. They're going to make one last run at it, though, on this kickoff. Albert Wilson is back to return. Gets it from about the five-yard line. Down the left side. He's got the sideline to the 40, to the 50. Breaks a tackle and is going to be brought down inside of the 50. So we are in West Virginia territory to start out this drive. Ronnie Bell drops back. Looking deep to his right side. That one is going to be caught by Danny Williams. That's a throw that 
I was a little bit concerned about making it first. Ronnie Bell does not have a great throwing power rating. That's really what he lacks over Ben McLean. So we cut the lead now, 24-14. We're right back at it once again later in the third quarter. Now still 24-14. We're going to pick up seven yards right there on that triple option play. Now more read options coming right here. This is going to be a handoff to Gerald House, the backup running back, who had a couple big carries today for us, including that one, 13 yards on the gain. First and 10 now as we cross midfield into West Virginia territory. Now first and 10 at about the 40. This is going to be play action. Bell is looking. He finds House out of the backfield. House is going to pick up about 12 yards on the play right there. So inside now of the fourth quarter, about seven minutes to play. Here's a quarterback keeper. Bell to the right side. He's got space. Goes to the outside and is into the end zone for the touchdown. And Georgia State has climbed back to get into this ball game 24 to 21. Now Paul Miller drops back out of the shotgun. He needs to get his West Virginia team down the field to end this game. So I believe this is Jordan Thompson picking up a huge gain right there. About uh, it's KJ Myers, excuse me. 24 yards on the play. Now Miller out of the shotgun once again, looking, looking. He's going to end up throwing on the run to Buey out of the backfield, who has a ton of open field after beating his man. He's just too fast to be covered by a linebacker. That's another big pickup right there inside of Georgia State territory. Inside the 30, Millard finds Bowie out of the backfield on the screen, and Bowie's going to cut back to the middle, get to about the 20-yard line, 9-yard pickup right there. Now third and five later in the red zone, Millard, he's going to be sacked. Once again, another key sack for this Georgia State team. So we can hold them to a field. We hear the kick is up, and it is good. So they do put points on the board, but it's still a one-possession game. Georgia State is very in this game. The offense has been spectacular in the second half. Albert Wilson will return it once again. He had a good return last time. He's going to get another one this time. Past the 40 to about the 41-yard line, a 39-yard return. Albert Wilson doing all he can to help us get some good field position here. Now at about the 50, handoff to Travis Evans. Evans up the middle, picks up about 9 or 10 yards right there. That's going to set up a second and inches. And now later in the drive on third and two, Bell drops back. Looking, he finds Danny Williams. Williams cuts. He's going to the left, and he's going to be down at the one-yard line. Danny Williams, 34 yards. And we are right inside of the five with 120 left to go after running a bit of extra clock. Gerald House gets in. I wasn't actually trying to score there. I was trying to get down at the one-yard line. That's why I dove. I wanted to run more clock or at least make them waste their timeout. So they get the ball back here. 115 left. This potent West Virginia offense. Completion of Buey right there. Buey nice, does a nice job picking up some extra yards right there. 10-yard reception, and now all West Virginia needs is a field goal to win this game. Miller drops back, looking deep. It's complete to Arlia, and they are inside field goal range with five seconds to play. So here comes the field goal unit for West Virginia. Game on the line. The kick is up, and it is just inside of the bar, and West Virginia will escape Georgia State as Albert Wilson will return this field goal. And he will just get sacked even before he get the 20. Not sacked, but you know what I mean. So, wow, what a comeback by Georgia State. But a great job to ice the game by the West Virginia offense. What a heartbreaker for Georgia State after making such a good comeback and looking like they had the game in their hands. They let it slip away on that last drive by West Virginia. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you did enjoy. And so I'm out. Peace.